All right, we have to be very, very quiet. Notice the print here. Less than 24 hours old. Looks like maybe an Adidas. Foot pronates to the right. Alarmingly, there's another print right next to it. So whoever this was stood with their feet together, motionless. But the most disturbing part is that I think, I think they loved Capri Sun. And that really bothers me. Well, it appears that winter is not quite done with us. Heading out on a little pseudo excursion here. Primary goal, don't ruin the Fuji around my neck. That's, uh, that would be step one. A wet camera, wet digital camera, tends not to function as well as I would, uh, as I, as I would like. So uh, yeah, Sunday morning, this is part of a van life film, but as you can see, not really a whole heck of a lot of van life gonna happen today in a, in a two by two, but uh, that's okay. These days, you gotta appreciate it because here in New Mexico, a day like this is really about moisture. Now, if you're a skier, boarder, yeah, you got the secondary uh, functionality, but really this is about setting us up for the summer. And this year, like the past couple of years, has had a, been a pretty dry winter. So we are stoked anytime we get any kind of activity like this. And yes, even in March, it can snow, April, it can snow, but uh, spring made its first little appearance this week. We had a couple of days in the 50s and uh, it was nice. I was in a t-shirt yesterday in Albuquerque birding along the Rio Grande. And this is one of the things I love about Northern New Mexico is you just never quite know what you are going to get. All right, I just got gas. Gas is up about 40 cents here. Uh, but you know what? Gas is still subsidized in the US, so I got nothing to complain about. And um, I just made a new friend. I just made a new friend without saying a word because that's the kind of gal I am. And uh, I'll tell you how it happened. I looked over and I saw this kid in shorts, by the way, riding probably a 2016 KLR 650. One of my dream bikes. I want that bike so bad. Kawasaki KLR 650. Uh, and it's that green Kawasaki tank and the black fairing. Now the new model you can get with like camo, it's, it's ultimate badass. But I saw this kid and the kid saw me looking at him and he pulled up next to me and he just gave me the shaka bra and I gave it right back to him. You know why? Because I have a Yamaha TW200 and that's a gateway drug. That is a motorcycle that is a gateway drug to bigger, faster, farther range motorcycles and you know how bad I want a KLR 650. I'm not gonna buy one, I'm not, I'm not gonna buy it, I'm not gonna do it, I promise. I swear to God, I'm not going to buy a KLR 650. I drive slow, I drive a lot, I am a gas hog. My carbon footprint looks like Sasquatch. However, when spring arrives, weather gets a little warmer, it's gonna be a major shift to the T-Dub and the bicycle, and the van is gonna sit until I've got longer missions to go on. I've got an East Coast mission coming up in the May-June timeframe, but I drive slow. I'm doing like 65 and a 75. I read somewhere that from 65 miles an hour to 75 miles an hour, you're gonna burn 30% more fuel to go that fast. And a cargo van like this, the plumber's dream, this is not a vessel that wants to go 75 or 80 miles an hour. It's much happier at 65. Secondarily, I'm not in a hurry. If I was in a hurry, I wouldn't have gone on this trip. Even though this is just an afternoon, an evening, and a morning, it's not a long trip. If I felt like I was frenetic or in a hurry, I don't think that benefits anyone. It doesn't benefit you, it doesn't benefit me, it doesn't benefit Blurb if I'm gonna make content on this trip that they're gonna end up using. So just chill, man, just relax. Go to Dairy Queen, get a dilly bar, and just feel good about yourself. Someone asked me if I was bald, and then they asked if who cut my hair, and it's a combination job. Um, I used to go to a guy here in Santa Fe who I will eventually go back to. He's kind of a legend in, in the Latino barber community here in Santa Fe. Uh, but who cut my hair? Me and my wife, but the backstory is it never happens easily. No matter how many times I ask my wife to do the exact same thing, it never happens without a fight. 
and she acts like she's never done it before. And then, it probably just to infuriate me, and then it works, and so it's always a fight haircut. There's always like friction and yelling, and there's pointed objects and threats made, um, and it's good. But this beauty is the result. Okay, this trip I'm heading east of Santa Fe, and um, I'm to the left of me and the right of me is the Pecos Wilderness. And uh, this is a pretty great place. It's still in great part untouched. It's pretty vast. It's a wonderful place to explore on foot, mountain bike. Um, it's also the home and former home of people like Jane Fonda, Tom Ford, and Val Kilmer. They all have big ranches out here or had big ranches out here. I heard that Val sold his. I don't know if that's 100% true or not. Um, I like me some Val Kilmer. He's had some legendary roles over the years. I don't know much about Jane Fonda. I saw her on the street in New York one time. And Tom Ford, I don't know anything about other than that he wears black all the time, which out here is not a great call. Um, it's a bit warm for that, but hey, who am I to judge? I talked about shooting backlit last week and I don't know if this camera likes fa facial recognition when it's backlit because I think these sunglasses trick the camera. I want to dispel a rumor about something. I hear a lot about van life from people who don't van life. I get it. You kind of, you're kind of interested. You're, you're, a, you're a pocket armchair expert. I get it. That's what the internet culture has done. It's turned all of us into pseudo experts on basically everything. But you hear about van life and you hear about people like, man, you better have a shotgun. You better have a perimeter laser defense system. You better have everything because as soon as you park that van at night, there's going to be like, I don't know, marauders or zombies that come to attack you. And, you know, everyone has these the dangers of van life floating around their head. I'm going to show you very quickly what the single most terrifying aspect of van life actually is. It's right there. Yeah, okay. It's the bathrooms that you're gonna encounter along the way. Now this one is the Grand Palais of bathrooms. When you see a bathroom like that, which is in a park that's maintained by the park service, thank you park service. I very much appreciate the work that someone puts in to keep their bathrooms clean. This particular park, the bathrooms are spotless. It's like, I don't know, it's like a warm blanket getting up in the morning knowing that when the time comes for you to engage with these bathrooms that you're, you're going to be okay about it. You're not going to leave there traumatized needing therapy. The single most dangerous thing you will encounter while van lifing, and I don't care if you're driving through Afghanistan or you're driving through Kansas, porta potties. They are the most horrifying, terrifying thing I've pretty much ever encountered in my life. And the thing is, I kind of feel like the porta potty, whoever invented the porta potty, I kind of feel like they're resting on their laurels. Like that, you know, we put we put someone on the moon decades ago. You would think that there would be a more humane way of handling porta potties and it kind of feels like everyone has resigned themselves to the fact that this is all this is going to take a year off your life every time you go in one of these. And I I really feel like this is a call to arms. This is a call to arms to some tech kid out there who's like 12 years old that's living in, I don't know, Burlingame, California, on the edge of the valley and is like trying to be a tech person. And uh, I need you to reinvent the porta potty because it's cruel and unusual punishment. And last time I checked, that goes against who we are. I think you'll find this entertaining. So I'm standing here. I've got camera number one. I've, number one. Camera number two. Camera number three. And uh, this one, obviously, on a tripod, which I had left on this slope that I'm standing on. Not a smart thing. And instead of putting the third leg downhill, I have the third leg sideways, because I'm me. And I turn around, and as I look back towards the camera, its whole thing is teetering like this. It's about to go face first down the hill, Sony camera, onto solid rock. And because I have cat-like reflexes, and accidents happen to other people, I saved it. just passed someone, doesn't happen that often, but I did, looked like about a 30 year old Ford pickup, but the F had fallen off on the back and it just said Ord. I just smoked that guy. I don't like it when cops hide, like Highway Patrol DPS when you come over a hill and they're hiding, 
I think that's just a gutless move. I've never liked that. Now, I am in no danger of getting a speeding ticket. I already mentioned I'm going 69 miles an hour right now, but I still don't like it. I think if you're a cop, you gotta stand on the side of the road with your lights on and your radar gun in hand, like saying, I dare you, I dare you. That's the kind of cop I want. I got pulled over in my life a grand total for speeding. I got pulled over a grand total of one time. And ironically, I was driving a 1983 FJ60 four-speed, I think it was a four-speed, Toyota Land Cruiser 4x4 with a top speed of about 65 miles an hour. And the cop pulled me over and, he, and I go, what'd you pull me over for? And he goes, speeding, of course. And I was like, no. And no matter what he said, I just sat in my car and I said, no, no, impossible, no, impossible. And he got so pissed, he let me go. Okay, completely unscientific observation. People who drink Monster litter more than people who drink Red Bull. I wonder what their marketing departments would say to that. Uh, Monster Energy, my advice, start an anti-litter campaign. Um, I literally just walked through a barrage of cans. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because when you drink a full can of Monster, um, by that time, you don't even know where you are. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you believe anymore. Nature becomes the enemy. I don't know. And you just, it, you can't help yourself. I accidentally drank an extra strength Monster once while I was in Texas riding motorcycles with my brother. And I was about halfway through the can when my brother said, um, hey, you might want to uh, lay off of that for a minute. And uh, 12 hours later, I woke up in, in uh, China. So you win some and you lose some. I just drove 100 miles, got my butt kicked by Mother Nature and by the Park Service. So as you can see behind me, this reservoir is supposed to be lapping at my feet right now, and we are a long way away. This reservoir is down hundreds and hundreds of feet, and I frankly cannot believe how far it's dropped since I was here a couple of months ago when I pulled up to the dam and looked over and saw that really at this point there's no need to have a dam. Uh, it, it's pretty shocking and pretty dramatic. Even when you understand the kind of drought that we're in, when you see it firsthand like this, it's it, it's still dramatic. It's still a little bit shocking. Now this reservoir is supposedly fed by the Canadian River, but I don't think that river's been been too generous as of late. And based on the snowpack that I saw on the drive over here, I don't think it's going to be too giving over the next uh, few months, probably the next season or year. So we 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 really need some luck on our hands to get these uh, get these places back up. The secondary part of today that's a little baffling is the park service. They've There's three areas on this lake, a northern area, a midsection, and then the southern section. And if I was going to rate them, give the, giving them a thumbs up or thumbs down, the northern section would be by far the nicest section of this park and also where you're most easily able to access the actual lake and water. There's boat ramps. There are other areas where you can camp right down by the shore of the uh, of the lake and for some reason that whole section is closed the middle section is closed and they've just left open this southern section i have not seen anyone out here it is as if this place is entirely deserted uh, and it's just a little baffling to me why they would leave this one open and close that one i don't know maybe there's a legitimate reason but it's it's kind of frustrating because at least i could be accessing the lake up there with with my canoe and also be camping relatively close to the lake. Down here in the south, it's a long walk to get to the water, a long walk to carry that canoe to try to put it in. And based on what I'm seeing from up above, looking down into the water, there's no real reason for me to, to put in here. The only amazing thing about today is that there is almost no wind. And for this part of the state, that is uh, an anomaly, especially coming into springtime when New Mexico specializes in wind. And when I talk about wind, for those of you in other parts of the country, I'm not knocking your wind. I'm sure you have legitimate wind at times. But out here, the wind is at a level that when you leave your house, you're not just checking the weather report for temperature, you're, te you're checking for wind. Because especially when you're driving a high profile vehicle, you know, 30, 40 mile an hour sustained winds during the spring is not uncommon. The, this also really applies to when I'm cycling and I leave the house on my bike. I'm constantly checking where the, the direction of the wind is coming from and patterning my ride based on that wind. 
that's a part of living in the American West that I think often gets overlooked. And again, I'm not knocking Maine for wind. Florida, I'm sure you've got wind. You got a lot of wind bags down there. But other parts of the country, sure, yeah, okay, whatever. Your wind is fine. Ours has an attitude. All right, I may or may not have just suggested to a friend that we buy Kawasaki KLR 650s and ride Baja. That might have just happened. I know it's irresponsible, it's juvenile, but hear me out, there's a, there's a connection, there's a tie here. This guy's father, uh, who goes by Ernesto, ha is a Baja legend, and his son and myself, we are, we are shadows of what this man was and is. We, we will never ever come remotely close to ever being as badass as this guy's dad. His dad knows it, we know it, but we do these desperate juvenile things to try and elevate our status back into something respectable. And I'm not saying, I'm never gonna buy a KLR 650. That's, that's never gonna happen. I swear to God, I promise I'm not gonna do that. But I may or may not have just made that suggestion. I just saw some sketchy stuff going down really sketchy. And for these parts, that's pretty sketchy. Now, you know that saying we all grew up with, crime doesn't pay. That actually, now that we think about it, maybe is not that accurate a statement. Because, in fact, I kind of think it does. And um, what I just saw, I think, is not the first time that these people have done what I saw. And my guess is it's probably not going to be the last time because it kind of pays. And oh, by the way, the gas station here, it just has a G on the sign. Someone stole the A and the S. I wrote this while sitting at a traffic light in Albuquerque. She sits two blocks outside the safety of hipster gentrification. Startling new condos at prices few can even contemplate. Art Deco tram lines and stylish cafes and coffee all looking out of place until a few make a lot. Around her, open-air drugged zombies emerge from plywood hovels, open lots, and the high-rise tram platform. She is new here, like a kid transplanted from one town to another and unsure of how to make friends. Trannies in purple thongs apply their makeup, grown men on BMX bikes with their entire lot in the world strapped to their backs. Across from her, a lodge-style hotel built in the 1960s to host then entertain travelers on this iconic roadway, long past its prime but remaining as a symbol of expansion, pride, hope, and evidence of what happens when speed and convenience rocket past culture and soul. Two dogs copulate in the parking lot. A chicken darts between cars. Broken windows covered in 80s movie posters. Cracked adobe and suspicious looks from those being hunted. Catching COVID here would be the least of her worries. She scoots to the far edge of her bus bench, her inexpensive business suit open and with a blood red shirt underneath, proves the effort being made, proves there is hope that this chapter of her life is only temporary. Her face shows signs of worry, stress, embarrassment, and fear. Three men land on the bench next to her, worn clothes, duffel bags, and dope gear in hand. Faces red from exposure, stress, and junk. Lighters flicker, bottle caps, and needles. One wears a surgical mask, which he pulls down to inhale off the smoldering foil. Behind them on the sidewalk, more backpacks and subtle hand passes of rock and money. Temporary dreams await, followed by one counting the cash and the other counting the minutes. To the east lies the ruins of modern Americana. Glimpses of the broken through boarded-up businesses and razor wire. To the east lies her reality if she slips further. An auto repair bill, a sick parent, or a lost paycheck. Simple, fragile, just above the existence line. As she looks up, her eyes meet mine, then fall to a red box she holds in her hand. The kind of box that would come from a lover as a sign of meaning, intent, love, and partnership. The box represents what lives to the West. Success, freedom, happiness, and safety. She spins the box in her right hand as she looks west into the setting sun her left hand slowly fingering the cross around her neck. Okay, there's an important point we gotta talk about. Everything today went wrong. The park that I was intending to overnight at is was closed. There was a piece of it that was open. The lake has dropped, not good. So plan B was to hit this wildlife refuge that I'd never been to, which I did. 
It was not technically closed, but it should have been. It looked like it had been abandoned about 20 years ago. All of the areas that were supposed to be filled with water to attract the migration, the bird migration, were completely bone dry and empty. There were tumbleweeds piled up against all of the signs that showed what kind of uh, birds used to be there. Uh, it looked like it was abandoned. I was the only car there and I was like, well, that's not good. And then I thought, you know what? I'll cut my losses, I'll go back to Santa Fe. Well, in the interim, this morning about 11.30, apparently, allegedly, someone tried to kidnap someone else in an apartment complex in Santa Fe, led police on a high-speed chase, got on the wrong side of the freeway going the wrong way. There was a four-car collision, two people dead, including a Santa Fe police officer. They closed the I-25 and old Las Vegas Highway and everything else through that area, so, for the past few hours, I've been stuck uh, in another town waiting to get home. But there's, you know, first of all, first and foremost, you have to say, look, man, parts go out to the police officer and the other innocent civilian who was caught up in that collision that, that perished in, uh, in the collision. Absolutely horrific. Because apparently the suspect is on the loose. There's a manhunt in my neighborhood. Everybody's locked in their house. Um, that is horrific. The point is, every day of our lives is a constant adaptation to what is around us. Photography sort of pales in comparison in importance to the rest of any of this stuff. We have to we have to improvise, we have to adapt, and we have to overcome to steal a Marine Corps saying. I think that's a great, great situation to describe the day and also what the, these other events that have happened. So I'm slowly making my way home expecting to hit a massive, massive traffic jam on the I-25, and I'm not sure I can get into my neighborhood. But I'm heading that way, and that's the way things are.